Mabuhay everyone, March is here. Welcome to the channel and for today's video, we will be doing an unboxing and at the same time, initial impression of this brand new sneaker from Jordan Brand. Let's go! So as you can see, there's a Jordan logo and I know you know what this is already. This is a Jordan 37 and actually 23 is not 37 but this is a Jordan 37 in this like bone fire red black so this is an Asia release and I actually tried them on earlier but I just want to show you the packaging first because it's kind of new it's a different one compared to the last one too because the 36 also had a very nice packaging that is why I'm going to show you this one too because it's another unique packaging from Jordan brand so it has a sleeve so this Jumpman logo there's a number 23 here that I think is a cool design of the two three it's like bars so when you remove it this is just white and at the side let's put it down here so you can see the box is like a diagonal box so it doesn't open up the traditional way so when you open it there you go and you can see the box is also cut out from the inside and there's a hole here i think i thought at first it will be a pull out drawer but it isn't i just wish it was a pull out drawer because i have a couple of sneakers here that are stacked so it's easier to pull out your sneakers when it's a pull out drawer just saying guys just saying brands hope you are listening and i know you are hopefully you'll make more pull out drawers and i think those are the best ones so here is the jordan 37 in the regular cut so there has been a leak about a jordan 37 low it was seen on the foot of jason tatum and for me personally, to be honest, in terms of looks, I prefer that compared to the highs because you can see the retro look more of that lows that gives a little bit of nod or heritage look to the Jordan 7 compared to the highs where you can see the Jordan 7's influence is on the underlining fabric of the upper. So we'll get into the upper more right now. For the Jordan 37 features a brand new type of lino weave and based on the touch and feel this feels a lot thinner compared to the 36 but the main difference is so you can see there's a lot more holes you can see more of your socks when you put your foot in here but the main difference in terms of the patterns of the lino weave is it is more compact to each other compared to the ones on the 36 where it's just a regular pattern it doesn't make different kinds of pattern on the lino weave this one has more tighter patterns in some parts of the lino weave and based on the touch even though this thinner it's a little bit more rigid compared to the 36 which to the touch is softer in my opinion this one has a bit more fusing to it the weave in terms of support when i was trying it out here in my floor it was very supportive even though it's really thin of course the ventilation of this one is i think one of the best the air would go through it easily like the jordan 36 and i really like that and of course like i've said the pattern you can see that pattern this one's from the jordan 7 and that is an underlining fabric fuse to the lino weave so it gives a lot more support to the upper which i think is an upgrade from the 36 because it gives more structure to the upper where on the 36 even though the lino weave is really strong it's a little bit flimsier compared to this one when i was doing lateral movements on this i was trying to stretch out the upper laterally it was really holding me down better compared to the 36 so that is i think the improvement of this one compared to the 36 lino weave upper as for the lacing system of the 37s it's not that speed lacing that is found on the 36 this one has a more regular lacing system here so traditional lacing system will give you a very nice customized fit to the sneaker when you want to adjust it accordingly to your foot 
So this is a high top sneaker. The lace loops are until this part. So it's really up here. So if you want more restriction around your ankle, you can tie it up to here. But if you don't want, I think if you tie it until the last lace hole here would be okay if you want more ankle movements because I tried lacing it until just here and the ankle mobility was really nice around the 37s if I just want a little bit more ankle mobility. As for the heel, there's an internal heel cup here at the bottom part of the heel of the 37. It doesn't go up that much here but it still cups your heel very nicely. And I would say the Achilles pillows of this one is better compared to the 36 because it has a little bit more bulge around the Achilles compared to the pillows found on the 36. So this one you can open it up and it's very easy to put your foot in. And of course this padding here also is from the Jordan 7. So, so it's a nod to the Jordan 7 design. And there's a pull tab at the heel with MJ signature. And on the other side, there's also MJ signature here. And the tongue is padded, but it's really thin and also perforated. It's padded, but it's not too thick, but still comfortable when I was lacing it up tightly a while ago and it didn't give me any discomfort around my ankle. So there's a Jumpman logo here on the tongue and at the back there's a Jordan text here and of course you can see there's two here so two three on the kind of pull tab off the tongue so the Jordan 37 comes with a very regular insole which is the Ortolite I wish that they gave us a better insole and as for the cushion of the 37 the 37 didn't have the full length zoom trouble that was found on the 36 and what this has is a four foot zoom struggle plus there's an extra zoom unit at the bottom so the feeding in the four foot cushion feels very similar to the cushion on the Jordan 36 which is really bouncy around the four foot and what they change on the cushion setup of the 37 is of course the brand new formula 23 from Jordan brand which you can see from here so for this colorway this is actually the formula 23 is kind of orange very similar to this orange of the traction so the initial wear of the cushion of course four foot bounciness you can really feel it but as for the formula 23 it didn't feel that plush so hopefully when i break this in it will be a little better but i'm not hoping too much like what i was uh, really hype up with the Luca ones because the Formula 23 on the Luca ones was just all right. I was really looking forward for a bouncy foam on the Luca ones, but they didn't give us that. So for the Luca ones, what I really like about the Luca ones, this is side tangent. The Luca ones support wise, especially on the lateral part of the Luca ones, was the highlight of the Luca ones. But in terms of cushion. I think Jordan brand could have done a bit better in terms of the cushioning of the Luca ones, especially Luca is a kind of heftier guard. So I think he needs a little bit more cushion, but maybe he wants that really court feel, very responsive cushioning setup. But for me, I wasn't too impressed with the cushion setup of the Luca ones. So I'm not expecting too much on the Formula 23 2 here on the 37s. But another upgrade on the 37s is this carbon fiber shack, which I think also in terms of design looks really dope. Look at that design. It's not your typical carbon fiber shack design. It's more futuristic in terms of design. It looks like snake skin. It looks better than the ordinary design of the carbon fiber. But what it does is of course, it helps out in the unlocking of the forward zoom unit. So when you're running, and the carbon fiber is kind of pushing and pulling the zoom units in the forefoot thus giving you a more bouncy feel and a very nice heel to toe transition especially when you're running with the 37s given that this is a decoupled outsole usually like i've said the coupled outsole has a very nice heel to toe transition feel when you use them especially when you break in the carbon fiber plate and based on my other sneakers 
The carbon fiber really complements in the zoom units which they help unlock the bounciness of the zoom units. As for the outsole of the Jordan 37, of course the design is based on the Jordan 7. The traction looks like tires, tire pattern. In my opinion, they're very thick, which I'm really impressed. I think durability wise on the 37 will be a lot better. The grooves are deep enough, although it's not too deep, but it's deep enough. And there's a little curve on the traction. So when you're doing like side steps, so there's a bit more grip around the medial part of the sneaker. And of course the durability of the rubber. This is of course an XDR rubber on my pair because this is an Asia release. This is a PF version. It has extra durable rubber that comes with it. And the feel of the traction when I was trying it out, it was gripping really nicely. And I think comparing it to the first time that I used the 36, the 36 traction at first wasn't that nice, but the more that I used the 36, the traction became better over time. And this one I think will be the same. Like right now, the first wear of the traction, it was gripping really nicely. There was a squeak to it. And I think eventually when I use them, the grip will even get better. But I think this kind of traction pattern in terms of moist floor won't be that nice because usually the traction pattern that sticks more on kind of wet floors or moist floor or dusty floors are those bladed type tractions, which is um, the downside of those are it's less durable compared to this thicker traction pattern. But hopefully I'm wrong that this one in terms of dusty floor, I hope it will still perform nicely. So for the size of the Jordan 37s, I would suggest for regular footers, go half a size down. This one is kind of uh, running a bit long to me because I got true to size and there's a whole inch in my forefoot. And given that the materials of this one is really thin, I think I could use a 10 and a half. So I, I'll drop by a Nike store and try out the 10 and a half. And if that fits me better, I'm gonna return this pair. Speaking of returns, if you buy online, like in the Nike.com site in the Philippines, here usually before there was no returning policy, but I was glad to discover that the Nike.com site here in the Philippines now accepts returns. As long as the sneakers are in very good condition, that's not very used. I mean, that's a nice incentive, especially if you get the wrong size, if you don't know the sneakers, if you haven't fit the sneakers. I think that's a nice step for their customer service. So let's check the weight of the Jordan 37 in a US 11. So it's 437 grams. So the 36 was a little bit lighter compared to the 37s. And I think mainly because of the Formula 23 of the 37s. For the price of this one, this is 180 US dollars. So this one is around 9,000 plus pesos here. So it's a pretty expensive sneaker. Uh, I'm not too surprised. I'm sure you aren't too because from the 31s until now or even before that, the Jordan signature brand has been from 8,500 to 9,000 plus pesos already. So it's pretty expensive sneaker. So let me know what your thoughts are on the 37s. It's kind of growing on me right now in terms of looks when I'm looking at it. And this colorway is not that bad either. I like the light bone color to it. And of course, the multicolor outsole is also a nice touch to it and gives a very throwback feel, retro feel on the colors of the traction. So let me know what your thoughts are on the Jordan 37. Will you be copying this pair? And hopefully you'll tell me why. So this has been Marches once again. Thank you for dropping by this channel. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.